well this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting thank you so much for joining me today how are you all um it's a beautiful sunny day here today when I'm recording this um, so I hope the weather is lovely where you are too I had a beautiful um break in um, Wales in April and the with the sun shone us, uh, on us every day. I did sit there wondering what we would have done if it had poured with rain, which it quite often does in Wales, but actually we had beautiful, beautiful weather. So very, very lucky. Um, anyway, I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in the UK, and I'm bringing you another paper crafting project today, another card that I've made, and it's this one here. It says, sending a card to say hello, using the beautiful new stamp set, Sending Smiles. You will have seen me using this a bit. Um, already and I've got more um, cards to come, projects to show you using it. Um, it's really adaptable, really versatile, lots of different stamps, flower images and stems and leaves to use in lots and lots of different ways. So I'm going to show you how I made this one. So I've used the, the whole bundle, so I've got the stamps which are here and then there's some dies. I've got some of the dies out already but we've got a whole set of dies so it cuts out all of these shapes. I think actually every Apart from that, I don't think it cuts that one. Is, oh yes, there is a die that cuts that one. Don't um, don't think it cuts this little thing. Cuts this, cuts and cuts out. It's got these labels to cut those out. So loads of possibilities with this set. I'm using last year's in colours for my card. I don't have them. Um, I do have the inks actually, but I don't have any card stock. Um, for the in colours yet my order hasn't arrived so um so I'm doing it in last year's in colours which I love so it's not a problem um so I'm going to show you how I made it pop that one up there I'm going to make this one in fresh freezer so I'm starting off with my normal card blank which is eight and a quarter by 14.8 centimeters um or if you want it in inches I can give you it's um eight and a quarter I just said that eight and a quarter inches it's actually 14.8 centimeters no 21 centimeters sorry I'm getting in such a muddle here it's eight and a quarter inches or 21 centimeters and it's 14.8 centimeters or five and three quarters let's get that straight and then you're going to score that either at ten and a half centimeters or four and an eighth inches <coughs> There we go. So that's our card blank. And then I actually need two panels, one to go on the front and one because I'm going to put a panel inside as well. So I've got one here ready to cut down. I'm just going to grab another one. I forgot about the centre one. I've got a box here. I might show you actually. I've got a box here that I keep my white, white um, basic white scraps in and what I tend to do is I tend to cut up some thin some of our normal um, cardstock basic white cardstock to make quarter sized panels for our cards because I use those panels a lot and then I cut the larger the thicker cardstock to um, card card blank size so half the half of the A4 sheet so I've got them ready and then all my little scraps go in here and eventually I will use all them up just keeps it all nice and tidy in one place and I've got another one for my very vanilla although I don't use that nearly as much right so my two little blanks need to be I'm going to do 0.8 of a centimeter smaller than my card blank so this was ten and a half so those of you who are very very clever at maths will work out that that needs to be nine seven to be 0.8 so let's do that just get my scoring blade out of the way and this way it needs to be um, 14 because it was 14.8 so that's one panel which is going to sit on there and it's got a 0.4 um, a board around it then and then this one do this one the same so it needs to be 14 and then 9.7 did I say yes I think so there we go that's our two panels we're not going to stick them on quite yet though we're going to do our our stamping and whatever first before we glue them down actually no I am going to put the front one on I'm going to glue the front one on I'm not going to glue the, the middle one on quite yet till I've done the stamping right okay so that's going there a little bit of Tombow on there and then 
using my silicone brush um, and those of you who have asked yes it will reduce the amount of wiggle time you get but it's still it's still better than the, the tape runners because the tape runners you get no wiggle time at all this will give you if you get it on wrong you can quickly whip it off um, but it doesn't give you as much time as if you hadn't you hadn't spread the glue out so if that's a problem for you don't spread the glue out just try not to get too much many slodges near the edges so that they it squirts it all squidges out right there we are right now we need to do some stamping and some die cutting so we need four flowers I'm going to show you how to do one. I've already done three because I didn't want to take too long on this video. So I'm using these three colours today. I'm using Soft Succulent, Fresh Freesia and Pale Papaya. I love these colours together. So I'm going to take my Fresh Freesia and I'm going to take this daisy stamp, which is here. So it's like an open daisy that's facing up to the sun, really. So it's a little bit different to the other ones. I'm hoping I've got room on this little bit of card just to fit this. There we go. And for this one, before you die cut it, you do need to do the centre because the die cut will um, cut. It cuts round the centre as well. So you need to do that before you cut. Otherwise, that will be a bit fiddly, I think. So... Go. there we are and then that's ready to be die cut with the die that matches can you see the die just place that on there and then I use washi tape to hold my dies in place and we will die cut that in a minute I might cut off some of the excess here so we don't need that so we're going to do some more die cutting we might need the room on the on the plate so there's that one what we also need is two of these stems because I've kind of added another one there to make it a bit taller. So I need two of those stems. So I'll take another piece of cardstock and my soft succulent. And this is the biggest. Oh, that's not soft succulent. Um, this is the biggest of the three um, stems with leaves. So you've got this one, this one. This is the one I'm using today. So... Again, I'm only going to do one of these. I've already die cut one of them. There we are. While I've got this out, I'm just going to do the other panel that goes in the center of the card. So I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. I know you all laugh at me because the grid paper is what's meant to protect my surface, but I like to protect my grid paper. So otherwise I have to change it to do the next video, which I don't really want to do. Right. There we go. I usually do my videos in batches, so I do two or three at the same time. Right, so I'm just going to do this like so. And then while I've got the stamp pads and the stamps out, I might as well just go ahead and stamp. So there's the, the one that I did before. So, And then that just ties in the front of the card with the inside. And of course, you could also... Um, stamp this onto the envelope if you wanted to. So to all of you who've been asking about our motorhome trip, it was a great success. We did have a lovely time. We had beautiful weather, like I've said. Um, leave that to one side to do later. Right, um, I need to put the die on here. Um, yeah, it was like we had beautiful weather in Wales and we were with a big crowd of other people. This is the problem. They all have either motorhomes or camper vans, which is why my husband is desperate. And he wants a camper van because I can see his point. The motorhome was lovely and there was more room, but it's a bit big to drive around in. If you want to do any sightseeing, it's a bit big to be driving around anywhere in. So we're still not fighting, but we're still still considering that right so I've got that and I don't know what I did with my flower where did I put my flower to die cut oh for goodness sake am I gonna have to do that again I don't know what I've done but I stuck it down and it fallen on the floor can anybody see it what have I done with it for goodness sake It'll turn up, I know it will turn up. I'm gonna leave it for the minute. And when it turns up, I will add it to the card. Nope, I've got no idea where I put it. Isn't that strange how things just go missing? Right, the other things that we need to die cut are 
put that there where I know where it is. Are these two, we need the thin one because that's going to mount on the kind of shadow. So I'm doing that in Fresh Freesia and another one out of the, the background in. So let's do that. Honestly, I really don't know what I've, where I've put that. It will turn up another time. Um, I should have done enough while I did, was doing them. Right, okay, so let's quickly scooch this one through. It's my mini cut and emboss, which is good enough. Oh, I've just found it. Oh, thank goodness. I don't know where it was when I was looking, but it's there. Um, yeah, this mini cut and emboss, I use it lots, much more than my other one. Um, but of course, sometimes I do need the bigger one, so I wouldn't be without it. But this one is so handy to just have sitting on your desk. Right, I'm glad I found that other one. Right, this is going through here. Oh, that moved. I haven't stuck this down because it uh, placement isn't that easy, but I don't want to waste too much of my cardstock. So being a little bit frugal here. And then just the stem and the flower to do. It's cut so easily. Look how beautiful that cut beautifully that cuts out. Really lovely. I love it when dyes do that. There we go. Get rid of those bits. And then we just need to do these two. Try not to do too much die cutting on camera because I know it's a bit tedious to watch. But you can listen to me rambling while you while I do it. So, um, and those of you, some people have been asking about how my daughter's getting on. The one who's in the um, Zog and the Flying Doctors on tour. Yeah, she's more than halfway through the tour now and enjoying it. The, there's bits of tour life that she's not enjoying. It's living out of a suitcase the whole time, of course, and not being able to socialise with a wide range of friends. You know, she's with all the people that she's performing with. Um, but she can't see any of her friends, but she has got a few days off at the end of May, so she's coming home to see us, so that will be lovely. Right, okay, so let's start putting this back, this card together. So this is going inside, so we could stick that inside while we're here. Doesn't have to be the last thing you do, you can do the inside first if you want to. There we go. Yeah, no, she is having a good time. She's really enjoying the performing and the show is getting really, really good reviews. Kids are absolutely mesmerised for it. So if you're anywhere near a Zog and the Flying Doctors performance and you've got little kids to take, grandchildren or children or friends' children or your children or whatever, do go and have a have a um, look because it has got good reviews. I loved it when I went and I went without any children, but then I'm biased. There we go. So we've got four flowers and two stems. And then the sending. Right, I might just assemble the sending first of all. So just take those little bits out. You just need tiny, tiny bits of glue on here. Now you could use our adhesive sheets and cut it out using them and then you'd just have it. But again, there's a bit of the problem with the with the wiggle room. You don't we once you've stuck it down, you wouldn't have any wiggle room. And this, I find this not tricky, but you do need a little bit of care to put this down and get it in the right position. And you might just want to alter a couple of places. So I just find it easier just to be very, very gentle with the glue. You don't need loads of glue on it. So just, just don't push the, press the Tombow glue too hard. And then you can stick this down. And it's great. Oh, and I've done what I did before as well. And I've got I've forgotten to save the dot on the eye. Did that last time as well. And my, my fix for that, rather than cutting out a whole other die, was to take my handheld punch, which I appreciate you, some of you might not have. Um, I need a little bit of can't believe I did that again it's not in there no it's gone cuts out so well that it falls out so I'm just going to cut oh that didn't work why didn't that cut out there we go just cut a few because they're quite tricky to see there we go there's one so I can just use that blob of glue but yeah try and remember when you're cutting this out that you need to save the dot of the eye there that's perfect 
Right, okay, so that's done. Right, now let's position our flowers. So we're going to have one stem here, and it's going to have uh, dimensionals on the back of it. All going to be mounted up here. So, using our mini dimensionals here. And, and we're going to have to cut some in half to make this work. So... There we go. So we've got some very thin slivers here to put on bits where they couldn't fit a whole dimensional. So that's the joy of our dimensionals. You can just cut them up to get the sizes you want. There we go. And I'm going to try and get one very thin one down on the stem there. There we go. Right, take the backing off. We'll position this one and then we'll des decide what we're going to do for the extra bit. Of course, you can cut stamped shapes up. You don't have to use the whole thing. So I'll just bring this back on so you can see. And I can see what we're going to do. We're going to do it about there. Do you reckon? Maybe turning a little bit more. Yeah, I might turn it a bit more. There we go. Right, there we go. And then the other one. There it is. I was going to say I'd lost it again. I would have been very, very cross. Right, this one I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut from there. There. It's going to be covered up by a flower. So, put that. I don't need that big long stem. I'm put that one about there. So you can play around with this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. You can play around, but I just wanted it a little bit bigger, a bit longer and taller. So have a little bit of a play. And just carry on using half dimensionals where there's not room for one. So one at the very top there, I think. And then we're done. Take these off. These dimensionals do really give your card a bit more dimension. There we go. Right, and that is going to go in there. Might be a bit tall. That's okay. We will put the flower over it. Okay, so now we can start placing our flowers. So one flower is going to go there, so it's not too high up. One is going to go here. One is going to go over here. And one is going to go there. Perfect. Yep, so again we need dimensionals. So because I want the, the middle stem to go, I'm not going to put dimensionals in the middle. I'm just going to put them to one side and then it can sit astride the stem. seen some really lovely samples with this stamp set so if you haven't seen them do go check them out because if you just google or search on Pinterest for sending flowers you will see some remarkably lovely cards there we go this one may well end up being a birthday card for my mum who loves purple or lilac um, so I might save this one it's not till September but that will be here sooner than we think. Um, now this one may need to change a little bit because it's going to be resting on some. So I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals in the middle of this one. If you don't want double dimensionals really, what I might do just so that it's glued down is just, there we go. And there, there. And then, where's my sending? So we need to mount our sending. And again, we're going to mount it onto dimensionals. Oh, isn't that pretty? That just brings it all together. I like that. Um, put some dimensionals on the back here. Quite a lot, because you don't want it to sink in the middle. Don't want it to be dipping down. 
I will be doing a lot. I've got quite a lot of backs of dimensionals here to get attached to my clothes and follow me around the house. That one. And fit on there. And I just need a little half or oh, one left over there. That's great. Just one little half to go on there. And that can come off. Oh, and what we didn't do when we were die cutting was die cut the message. Forgot that. The, the other message to go below here. I will do that quickly. There we go. And that will go there. Sending. And then quickly, get rid of all these dimensional bits. go and this one I am going to make into a birthday card as I mentioned so I'm going to do the birthday wishes so it will say sending birthday wishes so I'm just going to stamp that brilliant and then I'm going to take the smallest tag die this one and put that over there There we go. And a bit of washi tape to hold that in place. Make sure that's in the right place. And quickly scooch that through my um, die cutting machine, which of course I've put away. One and only time when I do put it away. And I need it. There we go, quickly scooch that. Of course you could do this at the same time as you were doing your other die cutting if you remembered, unlike me. few more it's rather heavy on dimensionals this card I have to say um, don't have to use all these dimensionals but it does pop, make the card pop a little bit more um, probably wouldn't want to be making this um, card over and over again so it is quite time consuming and a lot of fiddling with the dimensionals but just for one or two it's quite fun there we go just going to go on here and then we've got one more thing to do anybody spotted what the last thing is for us to do there we go sending birthday wishes just going to take some of those gorgeous little um, brass butterflies and put three of them so one and they just finish it off really nicely. You could use gems if you wanted to, or pearls, whatever you happen to have to hand. But I quite like these little brass butterflies and I haven't used them enough, but I'm glad they're still in the catalogue. So you can get your hands on them if you'd like to. There we go. There is our card. And here's the other one. So wonder if you have a favorite. I think the pink is still my favourite actually. I like those bright colours, but I am quite I'm quite attached to this one as well. So I hope you like my cards. Um pop down below, you can have a click through to the blog post so you can see the photos of this really clearly. Um, and then there'll be a list also of all the products I've used. So if you want a quick link to my shop, you can go. Please remember to use my code if you're going there. For May, it is EXDABJ2G. Um, that's my code for May. So pop it in and I'll be able to send you a, um, a product gift next month. Nobody ever knows what they are. So it's always a nice, I hope a nice surprise when you get it in the post. I always send out, even if you don't use my code, I always send out a little thank you um, package. This month they got um, a chocolate treat prettily wrapped up and a card, handmade card. But you will get a product as well if you um, use my code. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back really soon. Bye for now. Have a good day.